you know what I like to see from a spacey futuristic game? Spacey futuristic weapons. And even though the Sero can't really be called a space gun per se, the idea of slapping a glaive on top of a shotgun definitely is something different. And today, my friends, I have the absolute pleasure of revisiting one of the best primary weapons in the game, the Sero. As always, my name is Lazar, and I got a couple of builds lined up. Something cheap, something affordable, something you should treat as a jumping off point, or maybe if you're more of a casual Tenno. But rest assured, my veteran friends, we also got the end game set up with Prime mods, Galvanized mods, Amalgam mods, Arcanes. We're gonna be taking this one to Steel Path and put it through its paces just to see what exactly this absolutely insane weapon can do. That said, though, please bear in mind. That said, okay, that's I'm sorry. Please bear in mind that my builds and guides usually take a new player friendly approach simply because I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So, in case you're a veteran and you already know most of this stuff, please bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the setup. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of our regular free shots. The Seto is a hybrid weapon, a hybrid between an automatic shotgun in primary fire form and the secondary fire mode which launches the glaive which is stuck on top of the weapon. And even though this might seem like a kooky idea, it works really well, this being one of the most powerful primary weapons in the game and certainly one of the most powerful shotguns in the game. As you can see, when you launch that glaive on top of the weapon, it's gonna bounce between targets. You're looking at up to 11 bounces and with each and every single bounce, you're gonna be getting yourself an explosion. There's even more good news than that. It locks on to targets automatically. Take a look at all those status effects applying to those targets. Each and every single explosion has guaranteed two status effects that will be applied to your targets. Now the first proc is based off of modded damage types and the second proc is randomized between toxin, cold, electricity and heat. So my friends, with the glaive, you're gonna be applying a whole lot of statuses to your targets. But to what point? Well, the primary fire mode, the shotgun form deals 60% more damage for each and every single unique status effect affecting the target. So it's like Galvanize Savvy without using Galvanize Savvy, and yes, we can still put Galvanize Savvy on the weapon, which is absolutely fantastic. Also, the primary fire mode has default punch through of 0.8 meters, which is not a lot, but still something to behold. Now, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the glaive because the mechanics are a tad on the cookie side. Even though it does have that lock-on feature, keep in mind that sometimes it can veer off target without any reason whatsoever. So for example, you can aim at the ground like so, and then it goes the glaive off into the distance. If you missed your glaive for any reason whatsoever, what you can do is simply press your secondary fire again and it will return to you. Depending on the number of bounces, of course, and the distance travel, that can take a while. The glaive itself consumes no ammo, but if you're at zero ammo on your setup, the glaive for some reason will not fire. So do bear that one in mind. For the most part, this glaive mechanic works really, really well, but at other times it simply, well, goes off target for no reason whatsoever. That said, let's hop into stats to see exactly what we're dealing with. Mod capacity is gonna be 60 out of 60. If your comes with a measly 30 out of 30, you jump into actions and you install the Orokin Catalyst. The Orokin Catalyst can be obtained from a number of different places or activities. For example, you can get one by simply doing a couple of Nightwave challenges, then use the credits to buy yourself a couple of catalysts. You can also get one from Sortie. Some events in Warframe also feature a Auto King Catalyst as a possible or guaranteed reward, and you can also pay 20 plat to have one installed if you're impatient or you have a whole lot of plat. Now my weapon has been format a total of 4 times. This is not a forma heavy weapon. By default the Sedo comes with 2 V polarities, 2 Madurai. So yes, essentially it's a powerful weapon, it's an easy to build weapon and it's also a cheap weapon, which is truly amazing. In the empty arcane slot, you got a couple of options as per the usual. For a raw damage approach, primary deadhead. For a more casual standard approach, you're gonna be going of course with primary merciless, this one, because most of your targets or some of your targets are gonna be dying under the effects of procs and this one stacks when primary deadhead does not. You need to kill a target with direct damage to a head, okay so a headshot kill, in order to get the bonus from deadhead. Also, Primary Merciless kind of fixes one of the usability issues of the weapon. You get 30% reload speed as soon as you equip the Arcane, bringing your reload to 1.7 seconds uh, down from 2.2, which again is a big deal because it does have two usability issues. One, the reload, two, the fire rate. 
Speaking about fire rate, accuracy we don't really care all that much. The fall off is between 26 and 52 meters. I don't think you need more fall off than this. You're not gonna hit your targets more than 26 meters away with your primary fire. You will be hitting them with your glaive probably. But you see, you don't really use the glaive to deal damage per se. No, you use the glaive simply to apply a whole lot of statuses to your targets. You gotta prep them before you clean them up with your primary fire mode. That said, if you're gonna go with Galvanized Acceleration, this proves very beneficial simply because the projectile flight speed will be applying to the glaive, which means the weapon is a lot easier and more streamlined to use, and Galvanized Acceleration is still the best in slot for this particular, well, slot. Fire rate 3.83, this is painful. This is painful and the weapon needs fire rate like it needs air. 100% go for a fire rate mod, the magazine is 40, multi-shot by default 6.6 six pellets we're talking about here, alarming, punch rate of 0.8 meters, which again is not something significant, but it's nice to have to punch through the Grenier shield dude, and the reload which again is a tad on the lengthy side. Riven Disposition is 1 out of 5. This is a powerful weapon and it's not exactly a secret that it's a powerful weapon. So as you can see, you're not really going to be able to leverage the power of Rivens because the stats aren't really all that high. Now you can still go for a Riven, you can still seek that roll which is still worth slotting on the weapon, but you either gotta be really lucky with your rolls or very rich to buy such a Riven. Damage per projectile, critical chance 20%, which is good, 2.4x critical multiplier, Mwah, beautiful, status per projectile is absolute garbage, 0.3%. This is the buckshot, this is the shotgun mode, you don't care about this one, because all your statuses will come from the glaive. And it's gonna be puncture damage by default, which is good, because it deals up to 50% extra damage to heavily armored targets. Now in semi-automatic, accuracy 80, we're talking about the glaive right now, critical chance is nothing, critical multiplier is also nothing, but the status chance is sky high at 50% and the damage is slash. Not enough slash to ignore hunter munitions, but still nice to have. This is the radial attack right here, the range is 6 meters, the falloff is zero. No falloff whatsoever, and you know why? Because the damage is super low. That's why. <laughs> so if you thought, wow, well, I'm just gonna build it for secondary damage, no. Secondary fire mode is only there to apply statuses to your targets. And with that out of the way, let's have a look at a standard build, shall we? Damage point blind, multi-shot hellish chamber, critical chance, critical damage through the use of critical deceleration and ravage. Of course, hunter munitions is here, as well as a viral elemental combo between toxic barrage that can be farmed from corrupted void in the void, and the reload which is chilling. Hmm, hold on a second there. Why not use cold, cold, frigid blast, 60% cold and 60% status chance, because in this case you don't really care that much about the status chance anyway. Let me explain. You're gonna be applying tons of vitals and tons of status effects with your glaives anyway, and the primary fire mode isn't really gonna apply a whole lot of statuses anyway, not for the weapon status chance because the base is super low. So might as well fix that usability issue even further with 40% reload speed, bringing the reload to 1.6. And if you got the arcane, it brings it down to 1.3, which again makes the weapon streamlined and a joy to use. We're going to be using Fatal Acceleration in the Excellent slot, and I'm going to be testing the weapon out like so. Your option mod, aside from Chilling Reload, is also Shotgun Spaz. Fire Rate, you need Fire Rate on this one to fully enjoy it. Just give it a shot and thank me later. Now let's test out the weapon and see how she performs. Level 120! Corrupted heavy goons as per the usual. And I'm gonna use the weapon exactly like it's supposed to be used. Prep them with your secondary fire mode, then go at them with primary fire. How's that? How's that? How's that? Normal, average, everyday mods absolutely bloody annihilating that pack of corrupted heavy goons. And I'm not using anything special at all. No prime mods, no galvanized mods, not even an arcane. Nothing, nada, nothing. This is the power of the Zero. This is one of the most powerful shotguns in the game, if not primaries. You know why I'm saying if not primaries? Because it's not an AoE weapon, technically. It does have AoE status application, but not really AoE damage per se. And the Brahma users and the Zar users will say, Haha, Brass, I do more damage because I AoE. Yes, but still. This is, without a doubt, extremely powerful and extremely satisfying. And it comes with no ribbon and nothing fancy. You know what this means, don't you? It's gonna be extremely sick when we fully battle that out with more powerful mods. So this is your jumping off point. This is your standard build. This is what you play off of into something like this. Galvanize Hell instead of the normal version, obviously. Primary, Prime Ravage instead of the normal Ravage. Oh, and by the way, instead of the 60% critical damage here, 
I forgot to mention this one. Sorry, you can go shrapnel shot, 100% critical damage. It will make it more powerful, uh, but it's on kill and while aiming. So don't forget to aim on this one if you don't have the uh, prime version, of course. And we're also going to be using Galvanize Savvy. Yes, Galvanize Savvy is working on the primary fire mode, not the secondary fire mode. But we don't care about the damage that the secondary fire mode does. We care about the damage the primary fire mode does. So there you go. Galvanize Cell Acceleration in the Excel slot, Primary Merciless, Toxic Barrage, and Amalgam Shotgun Spaz instead of the normal version. Why? Well, it's 45% revive speed for just 5% loss in fire rate. It doesn't matter all that much. It's a personal preference and all whatnot. And besides, I don't really get to use Amalgam mods as much as I would. And now, once again, we're going to be testing it on the same targets as before. The level 120, Corrupted Heavy Goons. Use secondary fire mode. And then absolutely annihilate whatever stands before you, my friends. This is a Hunter Munitions build, and I'm not waiting for the procs. I'm not waiting for the slashes, simply because I want to highlight how much raw damage you can get out of this pape And all whatnot. One more time, and then we're gonna wait for procs. Just so you are clear on how much damage... Oh my god. I don't know if you see the health bars just melting away. It's there, and then snapshot, it's gone. And I got plenty of magazine left I think it was 21 out of 40. And considering the fast reload speed I have now, not even that is an issue anymore. So let's go normal. I'm just gonna use the secondary fire mode and then we're gonna go shot by shot just... Okay. You don't get to see the slashes. It's too late for slash. I gotta go for body shot so you can see the slashes. You see, primary fire mode doesn't really apply statuses, but even without statuses, just the slash alone from hunter munitions and your target still gets exploded. My friends, I think it's pointless for me to advocate you go buy, build this weapon and enjoy it, but if you need further proof, let's head on over to Steel Path. Welcome to the void, my friends. Now let's play a little bit of prep and destroy. And as you can see, the Sero, without any issue whatsoever, can destroy whatever stands before it with stacks of galvanized whatever or no stacks of galvanized whatever. Now in closed corridors, that glaive bounce is absolutely bloody phenomenal. It's gonna be hitting a whole lot of targets without any issue whatsoever. Allow me to demonstrate you. Nothing really can stand before you. It doesn't really matter what. And you can do this to high level, super high levels as well. This is the power the unquestionable force of the Sero. Now, let's try to do that defense target as well. We got a shotgun, so that should make it easy for us to destroy his nullifier bubble. Nullifier gone, prep the target with your glaive, and then hit him to beat the bits and pieces. And I think, my friends, that's kind of the story of the Sero. Now, of course, if you want even more power than this, if this is not enough for you, if blowing up a level 130 steel path-ish Corrupt that heavy goon in just a second and a half is not enough for you. You can go even harder than this with some Warframe buffs and synergies. And for that, we're gonna head on back to the Simulacro. Now you can use Hero if you want to see more crits on your screen, but obviously Lady Mirage Prime is where it's at when it comes to Warframe buffs. Now let's fix the fashion, and of course, Corrosive Projection against Heavily Armored Targets. It's not a must-have, but it's something to take into consideration. If your build calls for something like Shield Disruption, Rejuvenation, Physique, or whatever else, simply use the aura of your choosing. If the aura is that important to you, don't forget about Coaction Drift. Arcanes, on the other hand, are a whole lot more important. Goat Arcane Avenger R5, this one on damage, the 21% chance for a massive, 45% critical chance for 12 seconds, bonus additive after, simply stacking on top of what you already have. It doesn't care about the base critical chance of your primary, secondary, and to your melee, and yes, you get this benefit to all three at the exact same time. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, as we don't really need any more flat damage per se, what you can go for something like fire rate. However, keep in mind that Arcane Acceleration does not work on shotguns. So instead, you go for something like Tempo. Go for Arcane Tempo, my friends. It's a bronze arcane, so you should have plenty of it, and it's super cheap over on the trade channel. On critical hit, 15% chance for a massive 90% fire rate to shotguns for 12 seconds. You can go for something like so. Honestly, the secondary arcane normally should be something like your Energize or Armor or whatever else your uh, Warframe build calls for. When it comes to companion buffs, you have two options. You either go with the Panzer Vulpophila to apply Vital Procs, which is not really necessary by all intents and purposes. Instead, go with uh, something like a Sentinel. Any Sentinel you prefer, just make sure that on that Sentinel's weapons, you have the four Vigilante mods to get a 20% chance to enhance critical hits from primary weapons. Even if the little Sentinel dies and never comes back to life, you will still retain that buff. Max level, well, as max as I can max it here, sadly. Now, Empower for Mirage and her free ability for an absolutely outstanding 840% Eclipse buff and her ever so lovely... Oh, beautiful clones. 
Now, use the glaive. Just the glaive for a little bit of prep time, my friends. Just the glaive. And of course, if it was one-shotting before, what the hell do you think it's gonna do now? It's gonna clear house with my favorite magic trick of now you see him, now you don't. It's simply that powerful of a weapon. It simply does not care. And my friends, the Seto is a weapon that you need to have in your arsenal. It's simply that good. This is my name is Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And if you got any sorts of feedback for me, I would love to read that in the comment section down below. Also in the comment section down below, if you guys want to suggest any particular type of content. You can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. Nice, nice and clean floor. But until next time, my friends, bye bye. Oh, and if you love the content and you want to help me keep making it, why don't you consider supporting us via Patreon? There's a nifty little link in the card, upper right portion of the screen, right now. Bye bye, guys. Bye.